The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks so much for starting your trading day, trading week off with me. And we kick things off, folks, in positive territory. Quite the volatility continuing. We had it Thursday. We had it Friday as well. And this morning, S&Ps were up 1.56% right now. That's 56%, 56 points, excuse me, in the positive at 36.54. NASDAQ, as we come on the air, more than 2%. Don't have the chart. Shame on me. Apologies. Let me get that for you right now. We're coming. We're clicking buttons. We got the chart over there. Okay. There we go. You should have it. Kicking it back to the S&Ps. There's your S&P. There's Thursday's action. There is Friday's action up to 37.33. Quite the sell-off. And this morning, we're trading higher. I bring up the S&Ps. I want to make sure you saw that chart because check out the volatility and check out the Fibonacci retracement, folks. From the lows of 3502 to the highs of 37.33. Where do we pull back to on the close of Friday? We pull back to a 618 of that move now. I'm going to take that Fibonacci number off there. We're going to zoom in from high to low in terms of from 37.33 down to the lows we had, which was basically right around the close of Friday of about 35.91. We're now above the 382 up to 36.56. If you're looking for a 618, that's about 36.79. So you're talking about 23 points, a little bit to the upside in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're over 2% right now to the upside this morning, up 2.1%. The Dow right now up one and a quarter percent, back above 30,000, 30,079. Bitcoin, Almost makes it to 20,000 late last week. We're at 19,540 this morning. Ethereum's at 1318. We have crude up 76 cents. A little bit of volatility this morning. How about an 84 handle just before we come on the air at 8 in the morning? And just like that, crude's up about $2 from where it was at just an hour ago. You talk about some volatility, man. We put crude on the daily basis. Crude from 122 down to remarkably 76. What do we do? We bounce. Where do we bounce to? Pretty close to a 382, folks. Also an area that we bounce to, which is where we were in crude from about July 13th to August 29th, right? Basically six weeks crude, you could say oscillated at or near about $95, decisively broke away from that area towards the end of August, accelerates down to about 76 bucks. And we pop almost back to that 95 area, almost back to the 382. Crude turns over to negative territory, but just in the last hour, saving itself a bit back to where it was at about four in the morning. Gold contract catches a bid this morning, down to 1645 overnight. Gold back to where it was early Friday, 1671. Gold up $22 right now on the session. And we jump to notes and bonds this morning. We kick it off. We're going to have a little bit of higher price and lower yield. We got the 10 year right now, 3.92%. You talk about some volatility, man. How about just this chart? Uh, one of the reasons we're getting massive volatility in the equity markets, folks, is you're getting it in the yield markets and the note and the bond market, especially the 10 year. I mean, remarkable, folks, you had a two point drop off on the CPI print on Thursday. And then what'd you do? You climbed right back to that area at about 111.23 and boom, you sell off a point and a half. What are we doing this morning? We're going right back up towards that area, folks. I imagine next stop going to be somewhere near about 111.23. Uh, we'll see, though. The day couldn't be much younger in the week, folks, as we have the opening bell in about 20 minutes from right now. We jump over to the VIX. Now, we got a positive market, and it's more and more positive even over the last few minutes. Back to a five-minute chart to see. I mean, the run this S&P has had. I was up about six, uh, yeah, six this morning. So we were at 36.37, markets in positive territory, but the market really taken off over the last hour. We're 20 points higher from where it was at about eight in the morning right now. You jump over to the VIX. VIX, finally in negative territory. We were higher though. Look where you were at about six in the morning. We were actually uh, at an elevated. VIX was up about 25 cents maybe, maybe a little bit up as the S&Ps were up 20 or 30 points. Right now, VIX barely down a quarter, down 27 cents. And meanwhile, we get the S&Ps up 1.6%. You get the NASDAQ up 2.1%. Normally, you'd see a little bit more pull from that VIX towards negative territory when you have such a positive market. What's that saying? 
no one's quite sure where this market's going, folks. Even when you get days like the, today where you're going to kick the trading week off one and two thirds percent to the upside, the market says, you know what? There's no way we're going to reduce that volatility premium because you and I know that we may be negative by 40 S&P points by 10, 1030 in the morning. It's possible, folks, with the rip roaring moves we've seen, especially over the last two days as the market tries to figure out. What's going on with CPI? What's going on with inflation? Where will that take us? Where will the Fed take us? And what will that do to the economy as we go forward? Okay, with that in mind, we got some earnings still kicking things off. Uh, Bank of America tops estimates on better than expected what? Bond trading. Talk about volatility. Higher interest rates, obviously. Net interest income. Last last week, we saw it with the banks. Uh, JP Morgan especially putting up some big numbers as well. Revenue. They beat by more than a billion dollars. Earnings, they beat as well. Uh, third quarter profit fell to $7.1 billion. They're up this morning. We'll jump over to theirs in a moment. Revenue net of interest expense jumped to $24.61 billion. Quite a number. And the net interest income jumped 24% to how much, folks? $13.87 billion. And I know it's just a couple of decimal points, okay? Market was thinking they were going to take in about $13.6 billion in net interest income. Folks, that's an extra $270 million over a 90-day period just in net interest income. And imagine where interest rates are right now. Imagine that they are reporting on basically a three- to four-month almost delay of their net interest income. So imagine what's going to happen to that net interest income, folks, in the current quarter that we're in and probably the next quarter and maybe even further to go from there, right? Net interest margin, that's a key profitability metric for bank investors, widened to 2.06%, edging out the estimates of 2% the market was looking for. Fixed income trading revenue surging 27% to $2.6 billion. Market was only looking for 2.24. Uh, and equities revenue, though, dropping and missing the market, 1.5 versus 1.61. Um, yeah, so big numbers for Bank of America. They continue some pretty solid numbers for the banks coming into the earnings season. We kick it off with Bank of America and even getting the acceleration it did last week, right? Higher expectations because the other banks did well. Bank of America should put up similar numbers if they deliver and they do this morning. Uh, and you're catching a lift as well. You're up about 5% right now at 33.21. We jump to some of the other banks, JP Morgan. They're going to be up with the market this morning. And yeah, Bank of America, they are up. The market's up one and a half to 2% right now, which is quite a pop coming into the pre-market. Jump over to Wells Fargo. They were up higher last week as well. They're going to catch a bid this morning, up almost a dollar as well. City, they were higher. They extend those gains. All the banks creek being higher this morning as well. Um, Morgan Stanley, yeah, they were the lone one that they traded lower. They did. So they're, they're positive this morning, but they were almost a lone miss. Yeah, because Goldman Sachs, they were higher as well, gave up some of that Friday. No, they're not even out yet. When's Goldman out? Let's see. Jump over to earnings as we come into the break. So Goldman's out tomorrow. They're out tomorrow, probably out tomorrow morning. Uh, $12.15 expected move. So they're going to have higher expectations yet again as they're going to jump from 300 to 307 on some strong Bank of America earnings. We got positive markets all over the place, man. S&P's up one and two thirds percent, folks. As we come into the break, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Apple shares catch our list. Lift, excuse me, up about $3. There's a pop for you on Apple, man. Microsoft shares. They're up about five bucks to 233. NASDAQ 100 is up more than 2% right now. We jump over to Tesla shares. Even Tesla getting a lift. Quite a sell off for Tesla on Friday, man. We'll jump into that as well. Stay tuned, folks. Lots to talk about. We got earnings. We're coming back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and DSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we start with Tesla right now. Tesla shares, you're up about $5 at 210.18. Yeah, quite the sell-off last week to end the week. You got some volatility on the CPI print on Thursday, man. Tesla sells off from 224. You lose 20 bucks, man, down from 204. And this morning, you catch a lift up about 2.5%, pretty much on par with the NASDAQ 100. Excuse me. Jumping around to what else we have going on, folks. Uh, so just pulling up some articles. Sometimes you take a look at the movers they have here. Continental Resources. So this one's interesting on a couple fronts. Chairman and founder Harold Hamm and his family are going to acquire the shares of the energy producer uh, that they don't already own for seventy-four twenty-eight. Uh, not contingent on any financing and is expected to close before the end of the year. So they already own a large chunk of this, I believe. CLR is the symbol. You check out Continental Resources. Not really familiar, familiar with the business to any degree. Beyond this article and one more I'm going to show you, which is why it came to light. You jump over to the Analyze tab, uh, Continental Resources down to the fundamentals. You're talking about a company right now valued at about, uh, oh, come on load for me. I pulled it up earlier. I think it's about $24, $26 billion. Not sure why it's not loading right now. It was loading for me earlier when I pulled this up. CLR? Is it just not populating? There it is. $26.8 billion, the market cap for this company, Continental Resources, right? So it comes out, the chairman, the founder, he's going to be buying the company. Um, I looked him up. He's worth about 16 to $20 billion. Anytime you're worth that amount of money, probably pretty hard to peg down exactly how much you're worth in terms of investments, mark to market, uh, the debt underlying those assets, and probably 15 other levels that I'm not even aware of, right, in terms of how that debt can be either um, – just not very obvious, uh, for, for lack of a better word, obvious reasons. So nonetheless, $26.8 billion. He's worth about 16 to $20 billion, probably a lot of that going into uh, this equity. So they're buying the rest of the company, right? Well, where do I know that name from? I know that name from uh, an article in February that the shale king, Harold Hamm, is passing billions to his heirs tax-free. Folks, it's important to tie all this stuff together as it happens, okay? Because these moves could be corrected by our politicians 
both sides of the aisle, regardless, should get this done. The rich deserve to pay more in taxes, folks, especially at this level. And all you got to do is start fixing those loophole, loopholes. There's always going to be more. You can always say, well, w w they're just going to find another way. OK, it doesn't mean you can't close the loophole, folks. This one seems like a big one. So you have the founder moving stock to the Children's Trust. The stakes were turbocharged by a sharp rebound in oil. His wealth, this article has. Now, this is just from February. OK, what's the date on this? I remember February 14th, Valentine's Day. OK, this article is out. One of the largest wealth transfers in U.S. history last week. OK, talking about um, each of his five children, a stake worth about two point three billion dollars. OK, so he hands them stakes at those levels. Uh, he founded this company more than 50 years ago. Many ultra-rich Americans use this, okay? The massive gift years in the making is large, likely to be passed down largely tax-free. So you have a founder of a multi-billion dollar public company passing tens of billions of dollars almost, at least billions, right? This article's talking about five times 2.3. Uh, was that? $11.5 billion that we're talking about to his five children, basically tax-free. And then what do they do? They use that tax-free wealth to buy out the public shareholders of that company and take it over back again to, to kind of, you know, own all of it. Now, the way this works, okay, is that you're basically setting up trusts, I believe. There's financing involved. There's loans. Um, the gifts, of course, happen with timing. And so this happened that in mid-2020, when the pandemic dealt a devastating blow, uh, he restructured the transactions to boost the advantage. At one point in 2020, his fortune had shrunk to about $2.4 billion, down almost 90% from its peak. So what you do is you reset the transaction continually, always finding the low, okay, no matter what. The net worth has gyrated in line with oil prices. I mean, look at it, man. Back to 2013, 2014 was actually the peak in wealth down to 2.4. But what do you do is you're constantly resetting the price that you're going to transfer to some degree. And somehow that is allows you um, to lock in a low price and then everything else is tax free on top of it. And this happens with many, many other millionaires and billionaires. Uh, Phil Knight used a variety of techniques to move millions of dollars, billions, excuse me. Uh, and it goes on and on, right? Now, the way it goes in is wealthy pay interest on any intrafamily lending or else risk having it classified as a taxable gift. So they refinance the loans to the trusts at a value of $761 million each. And that was on July 1st of 2020. OK, now you go to the chart. We'll back things up just for a three year weekly. And where are we talking about, folks? Yeah, we're talking about a level of. $14, $15 July of 2020 on those price levels, basically a pandemic lows when crude. Crude, if you recall, was at negative prices in April. Um, anyway, you know, that's that's frustrating, folks, when you have um, one of the wealthiest people in the world, right, passing that wealth onto their heirs, basically tax-free, and then they all get together as a family, use that wealth, and buy out public companies of public investors in the oil industry as gas prices are spiking. Um, you know, if you think it's tough, to make money in the gas industry right now and the energy business, folks, um, you wouldn't have founders taking over the entire business to make sure it's all theirs as we go through this period of time. Um, so anyway, thought it was ironic you see that out. They buy out everybody else of the public company. And how do they get to do it? They do it by passing on all that money to the family tax-free. So pay attention, man. That was a tough one. All right, what else do we have going down the line? We talked about Bank of America. We get some other banks. So Apple getting a little bit of a lift as Morgan Stanley named them top pick for its ability to withstand an economic downturn. Uh, they do have quite the recurring revenue. Can't argue there. Yeah, Meta's in trouble, man. You know, they might get there for VR, but they're not getting there just yet. Meta's up three bucks today, but check out that slide from 375 to 126. And the numbers that they're talking about, they're not hitting. And that's what I would pay attention to, man. I've been talking about I have the Oculus Quest 2 uh, VR headset. It's great, man. It's awesome. There's not a lot to use it for just yet, though, I feel like. I pull it up sometimes. There's a couple games. I have ping pong. I actually paid for ping pong on that um, platform. So that's a cool one you can play occasionally. There's other ones that you can get for free. But they were looking for 500,000 people in their Horizon Worlds in terms of internal documents. That's their flagship metaverse product, Horizon Worlds. Well, they um, they only have about 200,000 
and now they're not even probably going to hit the revised goal of 280,000 they were looking for by the end of the year. So that's a tough one. Now, Goldman, yeah, they were higher as well, but they have a few things going on. They're combining various businesses into three divisions as well. So they're getting a lift, lift probably with some bank earnings, but also getting a lift there with the news that they have coming out up to about 307 bucks. Yeah, and Credit Suisse, you got the Financial Times reporting that they're prepared to sell parts of uh, the domestic bank to raise capital and shore up their balance sheets over uh, at Credit Suisse. Now, you talk about combinations. Verizon, Verizon's been struggling in a big way, man, but they're going to team up with Walmart. They're going to sell new prepaid wireless internet service at Walmart, 45 bucks a month, and it's limited to 100 megabytes per second. So internet is – I was having this conversation yesterday um, with some family and friends over the house – and saying, you know, we have a lot of streaming services right now in the house. We have uh, three kids in the house, folks, two adults, of course, so five of us. And so you span the spectrum of what we watch, really. And no pun intended, we do have spectrum for cable. And we get a bundled cable TV with them that comes with it. We get Disney in there. I'm a Prime member. Uh, you have Netflix, of course. And we have HBO on there as well. But what I was saying was... Really, all you need is internet, man, because we watch YouTube a lot, and YouTube's free. So think about that, and that's Google. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back. We'll be back with the opening bell, folks. Stay tuned. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got markets accelerating higher. Watch out, 3666 in the S&P as I speak right now. You're up by about 69 points right now in the S&P. That's 1.9% in the positive as we charge higher. Make it 70 as we speak. NASDAQ 100, we're up 2.6% right now. Dow up 470 points, 30,170. We got Bitcoin, 19,600. We jumped to commodities. Crude, up a dollar on the session. Volatility in both directions to kick things off. Crude trading at 8663. You check out the gold contract, up about $23 right now. We jump over to notes and bonds. 10-year, up about 20 ticks right now, 111.07. And let's jump around to some currency action this morning. You got the dollar index back to 112.52. That is helping out some of these markets right now. Putting this thing on a daily, excuse me. Excuse me. Now, we do have a little bit of a pullback, folks, but I'm always, you know, I love the short term, but when you go to the currencies, I would, pull up a little bit of a longer term basis because no matter what is happening on a five minute and a 15 minute basis, folks, the trend is intact right now, okay? Uh, technical analysis is an art, not a science. You could make the case that the, maybe this bottom line deserves to be a little bit lower or potentially a little bit higher using a little linear, linear regression, right? Maybe we got the low in August was the one outlier that took things a little bit lower than maybe that trend should be intact at, nonetheless, well intact on the upside and the downside, that trend, we're just right in the middle of it right now at 112.53. We jump over to the Euro US dollar, 97.7, 97.8 we'll call it. Again, basically the inverse chart of the dollar index. I believe the Euro, what's a Euro, 60% of the dollar index? It may be, it's a big chunk of it. You jump over to the pound, pound US dollar, and I'll get those, um, whoops percentages up because it is good to know in general but we have the pound us dollar actually making it back within its channel line still a downward channel line but we got a little bit out of whack there today you get the pound catching a little bit of a bid as they have a new finance minister i believe over there we'll jump over to that in a moment as well and you got to jump to the dollar yen man dollar yen what are we doing no inverse in the dollar yen what so much pretty remarkable the move in gold this morning when you get the dollar yen pushing highs of 149 man that's a five minute chart we just made a new Recent high at about 7 this morning as you push towards 149. Japan, man, whew, they are in some trouble when it comes to their currency, man, from 115 to 149. And you're not slowing down at all as you just continue to make highs. I mean, we just pulled up the euro. We pulled up the pound. Not even close to the lower levels, right? Check out the euro again to show. Yeah, you're well off the lows of 95 in the euro. The pound not even close right now. Whoops as that thing really got out of whack to the low side as you're above that level. But guess what? The yen, weakest of them all right now. This market, no weakness at all, man. As the S&Ps charge higher, we're up by 78 points. Let's see on a Fibonacci basis from the lows, excuse me, from where we opened on Friday to that acceleration. Watch out, folks. We're coming into the 618, 36, 78, 94 right there. You know, if you're looking to get short this market, might be a nice point. Set your short right on the other side. Our man Larry Pesavento, always looking at those Fibonacci levels. They're talking about them in the den. Uh, and you know what, Jimmy? That's a great move, man. I didn't even see. Now I look back to the den. Our man Jimmy in the den, he's always talking about those 618s. He was on it, man. 36.78, the 618, up to that price level. Uh, and we just get there, folks. We just got to a level of 36.77.25 on that level. So we'll see where we go from there. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have up here. We talked about the stocks making moves. Um, no, we talked about that one as well. Yeah, let's talk a little bit of sports and streaming, man. So Sunday, we had some great games of football yesterday. The Bills, man, the Bills look legit. How about the Eagles, man? The Eagles, right? They're undefeated. College football, Bama goes down on Saturday. Uh, baseball playoffs are shaping up. Yeah, the Dodgers. What do the Dodgers have? 111 wins. Boom, they're gone from the playoffs, man. Uh some of the payrolls in baseball, some of the highest of them all, the Yankees, they get it done last night. They're on the ropes as well this more, uh, this playoff series. Spend like $246 million. I think the Yankees versus the Commanders. The Washington Commanders, is that their name? No, Gar no, yeah, Washington Commanders. Uh, I'm not a huge baseball fan, folks. I love the sport. Fenway, the history, the experience is great. Unfortunately, down here, everyone gives the Rays a bunch of crap because they can't get any fans. Folks, it's tough with 162 games, and you just don't have the experience when you're at a ballpark that's nothing like Fenway or any of these big parks out there. Uh, 162 games in the regular season, and what happens? 162 games, and then you have shortened playoff series of like a best of three, best of five. 
why do you do that? Why do you play 162 regular season games and you don't just go best of seven all throughout the playoffs or something like that? I mean, the Major League Baseball, one of the big problems of going to those games, and they're making some changes before next season. You're going to see what? There's going to be a, a timer on the pitch count, right? They're going to really try and shorten those games because games are four hours. And you play 162 games in four hours, man. You know, they have issues. And now you have the playoffs are shortened. You get three-game series, best of three, best of five, and the best teams are losing because sometimes you catch a wrong couple wrong games and you're out. That was it. All right, well, guess what, though? I just told you. I mean, that's part of the reason. Look how fired up I get when I'm talking about sports. Uh, there's nothing like live sports, folks, when it comes to needing to watch something at that time. Sports TV rights are costlier than ever, but their cables last lifeline. And, folks, they're going to be gone, man. We saw the writing on the wall. Week two this year of the NFL, okay, you had Thursday night football games. Now, they're arguably the worst games on the slate, usually. Not arguably. They are. Occasionally you get some good matchups there. But they are no longer available outside of Amazon Prime. And that's it, man. That's it. Okay? Now, check out the numbers we're talking about here. From 1980 to 2023, the five largest professional U.S. sports leagues have paid more than $210 billion they have earned from domestic media rights alone. Think about everything else that goes into those leagues. And over 23-year period, probably most of it, as you're going to see from this acceleration right here. Okay, so this talks about um, from 2000 to 2023. You see the jump up, which is why they included that. And this is talking about even MLS, which probably, yeah, I was going to say, is the black. So you can almost just take that out of things. And you almost could take the NHL out of things, man, even though the NHL is great, folks. And they are on the rise, thankfully. Uh, but it's all football basketball and baseball for predominant of the money we're talking about 15.4 billion is how much broadcasters and streaming services are going to pay this year alone now amazon is paying about a billion dollars just for the rights to play one football game a week on thursday night football think about that right the five leagues are collecting 15.4 billion dollars for every single game included for the media rights and meanwhile, Amazon is paying one fifteenth of that just to air Thursday night football is one way to look at it. And I think that's like a 10 year contract they got. But that was the beginning of the writing on the wall, folks. Now, you know, you're going to see a, a convergence, a, you know, a, these two different worlds of streaming and cable TV converging to basically be one in terms of every TV is a smart box that's connected to the Internet. And we're now seeing it play out that you're just going to be able to selectively pick your, pick your own cable lineup. You know, you can, you can subscribe to TLC. You can subscribe to Paramount. You can subscribe to Peacock, right? You can subscribe to ESPN. So maybe you get a company like ABC that has Disney, that has ESPN. You get multiple advantages paying for those rights. Amazon gets multiple advantages paying for those rights. How you combine that is how that's going to happen, which is probably why they're paying a billion dollars just for Thursday Night Football. We'll finish this conversation up, folks. Look at the earnings coming up. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And higher we go, folks. S&P's up 96 points. That's 2.7% in the positive right now. So much for the 618. That's why you use stops, folks. Uh, through that territory, maybe we're on the level of 37.33 right now. You're only about 40 points away from that level as the S&P's charge higher. How about the NASDAQ, man? NASDAQ 100 up 3.3%. The Dow up 2%. That's 602 points. Dow within about 180 points of the high we had on Friday morning before the market sold off. We got crude trading higher, near $87 right now. Gold continuing higher, up about 23 bucks at 16.72. We jump over to the dollar index. Dollar continuing to fall right now, folks. 112.42. Interesting, right? Pay attention to what's going on in terms of this dollar index. Just even rolling over a bit right now, given the market the fuel it needs. We just dropped 60 cents, folks, from 8.15. Yeah, from 113 to 11240, just like that. And this market's not stopping, man. Let's jump over to notes and bonds. Uh, yeah, even as the market takes off, note and bond market pretty much right where it was at 815. So we got some currency action going on. You could call it a relief rally, folks. Not sure where that relief comes from, considering the CPI print. I mean, imagine the world, right? Well, you get the CPI numbers, and then they tell you what happens on Thursday. They tell you what happens on Friday. But guess what? You wake up Monday morning, and we're testing the highs, man, with the S&P up 2.5%. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, jumping back to that article, a couple things I wanted to bring up in terms of just the raw numbers of how important this stuff is. Check out this graphic. Let me see if I can size it down to get it all in there. This is talking about the top 100 annual most watched broadcasts by millions of viewers. This is over a period of, I think, four years in here. So basically, you're going to have um, about 400 broadcasts somewhere in here. Well, guess what, folks? The NFL has got 310 of them. And you see the numbers for the Super Bowl-esque, right? There are the four years. 100, 103, 98, and 92. What else is next? Olympic Games, the NBA, uh, you got debates, political debates that drew some big numbers in there. Probably Biden, um, Trump, 63 and 73 for the 2020 election. You got some award shows in there. Uh, the Big Bang Theory put up some big numbers, maybe for their finale. Thanksgiving Day Parade's a big one. And uh, Jeopardy specials. Maybe that was some of the Trebek's final episodes in there as they did it. Maybe that was some of the guest hosts filling in to fill his role. Nonetheless, NFL is what we're talking about, folks. Look at those numbers when you're talking about broadcasting. Realize that Amazon is now in the business, streaming is now in the business to exclusively offering streaming to uh, those broadcasts alone. And yeah, that is where the future is gonna be going. And those big companies are gonna pay, man, because it is too important to get those numbers in there. Cable and satellite TV subscriptions, 
uh, across major providers at year end. Now, folks, graphics can be very, very misleading. Okay, I'm not sure they, what, what do you call it when you do this to a chart, right? The y-axis doesn't reach zero. So it makes you think it's going to zero instinctively in your eyes. But really, that should have a, a graph from 90 to zero. It's only going from 90 to 60. Quite a fall off over the last few years, though. Look at that. That's just happening, folks, from like 2017. You're dropping. You had, you had held pretty steady, right? The barrier has broken in the last three to five years for cable TV. It's in a free fall, and it's not going to stop, man. But what you're seeing is it's going to be some type of a convergence between the two uh, where, yeah, you're going to have something like, you know, the TLC app, as in everybody's going to have their flavor. Those channels are all going to be available for whether they're going to be ad-supported, whether they're going to be five bucks a pop, Discovery, all of those networks are still going to be there. But, yeah, that graphic, we all know it, but, boy, they're going to pay for it, man, because – that's what people watch, folks, and you got to watch it live. That's the other kicker of it, right? You got to watch it live, and there's nothing like it, so you got to have it. There's a fear of missing out when you're selling to consumers, and that, I think, is the best way to get that done. Okay, let's jump around to what else we have going on in terms of earnings, uh, and we got some big ones. This week, we talk about Netflix. Let's jump over to streamers. We'll stay with it. Up 3.3%. They have been in the doghouse for a while. Well off the lows of 162, they catch a lift on the last earnings season. They just go public with the fact that they're going to have now the details of their ad-supported network. I think it's 7 bucks a month, something like that. Nonetheless, they're up 3.3%. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You want to talk about some volatility, folks? A $27 move, which you're talking about, what, 11 12% priced into this equity as they'll be out with their numbers after the close tomorrow. So they're looking for two seventeen dollars a share in earnings on revenue of $7.84 billion. Um, and, yeah, it's all going to be about subscriber growth, I imagine. And I wonder if they're going to be saying anything about that ad-supported new platform. Because at one point, folks, that was uh, – Something Reed Hastings said that he was not in the business of thinking about, but everybody else is doing it. And now they realize they're not going to be able to grow just the subscriber base and they're going to start growing the ad supported network. IBM is out with their numbers on Wednesday. Let's see. After the close on Wednesday, IBM is out. They're expected to take in about $13.5 billion. And uh, let's see. We got about a $7 move priced into the earnings, one twenty two dollars for IBM. Yeah. And we go from there to Wednesday. The main event Wednesday is going to be Tesla, man. Now, Tesla, pretty surprised, actually, that you only have a $15 move priced into this equity. Excuse me. Back to the chart, 212, challenging the lows we had. When you're talking about May of earlier this year, you jump over to the Analyze tab. Ooh, $666 billion, 600000 right now is the price of Tesla for the market cap of that company. And you're looking at about a $15 move. And they will be out with their earnings, yeah, on Wednesday after the close as well for Tesla shares. So Netflix, IBM, Tesla, some of the companies, among many, many others, coming out this week as well. Let's see, jumping around to what else I had pulled up. Credit Suisse, they're going to get a new CEO, it looks like. So uh, investment bank CEO. Meissner said to leave the lender, and they're also selling some assets to shore up that balance sheet as well. Goldman shakes up the leadership ranks, uh, and that's the CEO unwinds key changes from previous restructuring in 2020 as they continue to deal with what they're doing in terms of the C-suite there. Is uh, the third major reorganization in just four years as the CEO office undoing some of the signature moves he made just recently two years ago. Interesting, right? Uh He's going to combine its expanded asset management and private wealth business into one unit after that was split up. So Goldman, nonetheless, Goldman trading higher, man. They came out with some big numbers earlier this week as well. And look at this market, man. 93 points to the upside for the S&P. NASDAQ up 347 right now. Interesting that we're going to be coming into the next vid meeting before we know it, folks. That meeting starting in about two weeks. It's October 17th. Um, I believe that meeting, November 1st and 2nd or 2nd and 3rd. Right the first week in November is when that meeting happened. 75 basis points basically baked in, uh, if not the conversation, potentially shifting to 100 basis points as this market just accelerates higher, man. Now, we'll back back to a 15-minute. We're going to take this little Fibonacci number off there because it's blowing through all the levels right now at 36.91. We're up 2.6% in the S&Ps. But I'm going to add a little context to this, folks. There's your daily. All we're doing is we're back to where we were on Thursday, folks, just off recent lows in this market 
you're talking about, you know, quite a pop, 110 points to the upside, folks. But keep things in context of where we are, where we've been. We're at 36.91, and the data is not lining up for inflation going anywhere anytime soon. So, you know, we're getting a little relief rally, but we get a Fed meeting in two weeks. And I'm not so sure that the market's going to be so happy with what the chairman has to say in the light of what that CPI had to say on Thursday. And we come into a pretty important earnings season. We're starting it off. Banks delivered, folks, but banks got a lot of money and in interest income. And that's not how most businesses make their income. So we'll see. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding up pretty well right now, up 2.5% at 36.88. NASDAQ 100, you're up 3.2%, 11,085. I mentioned we committed some pretty earnings, pretty important earnings this week. Netflix, uh, Tesla, IBM, among many others. Jumping around to some of the articles I was reading this morning, we'll end with this one for the program because it's a good one. It's just making things, folks. It's not about what the last 90 days did, folks. The never market never cares about the past. What are you doing for me in the future is how it goes. Uh, when it comes to last quarter's results, who cares? Bank of America strategists wrote in a note to clients, guidance is going to be terrible. This is just an opinion, okay? We expect guidance to weaken even further going forward and more downward revisions across the board. They mentioned in the past six weeks, you got bellwether firms like FedEx, Ford, Nike, NVIDIA, Carnival, 
Is Carnival a bellwether firm? I don't know if I Micron uh, have either reduced their forecast or provided muted outlook. And, you know, we get a lot of dollar strength, folks, and that usually hurts earnings. It definitely hurts earnings surprises is what they get into for the number. You talk about domestic versus international. Check out this chart. Not surprising, folks, but keep it in your mind because, yeah, we have a little bit of a dollar pullback. OK, and we talked about it. you got a huge dollar pullback as the markets accelerated higher here. The two are definitely related to some degree when you talk about a basket of firms with domestic sales in the black here versus Goldman Sachs basket of firms with international sales. International far underperforming that number is they're going to be facing a tough dollar, man. And if you're doing international sales, there is no denying that taking money to the bottom line is going to be an issue in this market as we come into earnings season, folks. Uh, so be aware because, you, you know, what else they mention in here is you're talking about an area where you're going to have, yeah, a double whammy of inventory oversupply amid slowing demand creates the main risk this earnings season. So be fair, careful of those companies. Amazon fell victim to that. Retail fell victim to that last earnings. We'll see how it goes around this earnings. We got some waning demand. Uh, we'll see if it plays into the earnings season. But we're coming into it right now, man. S&P's up 23. We'll finish it off with the VIX. Volatility index down about 60 cents at 31.43. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next with the Tiger Technician Tower. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 11 o'clock. Fast Market at 12. Larry Pesamento at 1. Dave White at 2. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Monday. Thank <laughs> you.